So there I was, dead cell phone battery and desperately needing to make a call. I know you've been there. It was 2013, and I was in a remote village here in Malawi, Africa. I was directed to a, go to a local barber shop, which is where people charged their phones at the time. I walked in this small room, and the barber pointed to the floor, and he said, booster charge, 15 minutes. I looked down, and there were two large car batteries with black and red wires springing out of them like the 4th of July, connected to cell phones. One of the cell phones seemed to be making a crackling noise. He said, take the battery out of your phone and connect it directly to one of these wires. <laughs> I didn't know a lot about electricity at the time, but I was pretty sure that was a really bad idea. <laughs> what I didn't know at the time is that this is a very dangerous practice. In fact, cell phones can swell or even catch fire. So this was my introduction into how 90% of Malawians contend with a life without electricity. The power grid is very old and doesn't reach many people. So as a result, people walk long distances, sometimes up to eight or nine kilometers, to get their cell phones charged at places like barbershops. So at the time, less than 1% of Malawians had access to solar, yet 28% of people had a cell phone. Why wasn't solar keeping pace with this demand to charge cell phones? I was fascinated. So my first stop on this investigative journey was to a local shop where they sold solar products. And the owner showed me the display of his solar products, and they looked like something out of a 1960s science fiction film. They were clunky, and they looked old. And I noticed that the solar panel and the battery were mismatched, meaning the battery would continually be destroyed. So I wondered, are Malawians just continually buying batteries in this country? <laughs> so I asked him, I said, do you have anything else that's you know, higher quality? And he said, no, 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 you don't understand. Malawians, they don't want high quality. They just care about one thing. They care about cheap products. In fact, if I were to sell high quality products, nobody would buy them. I thought, that's really interesting. And I wonder if that's true. So I left his shop, and I went and I talked to some friends, Malawian friends. And they said, no, Joanna, we do, we do want high quality products. In fact, a lot of us, we go to South Africa and bring back high quality products for our friends and families. We are so tired of buying a product and it breaks just after a couple of weeks of owning it. So I continued my search in Malawi, looking for high quality solar chargers, and I couldn't find any, so I naturally did what any person would do. I went to China. <laughs> So here I am in Shenzhen. I visited dozens of solar factories. And in one particular solar factory, I was with the manager, and he was impressing me with all of the quality control measures that they took. And there was this gigantic machine. It was the size of a large kitchen table. And light shot up from this machine, and it was simulating the brightness of the sun so that they could test the efficiency of these solar panels. And he said, Joanna, your American customer is going to be so happy with the quality of products we deliver to you. Now, he assumed that because I was American, that my customer was American, and I didn't correct him. So we left that room, and we accidentally went into a side room where there were young teenagers on the floor banging away for some apparent reason on low-quality solar products, nothing like what I had seen before. So, I raised an eyebrow, and I said, hey, what's going on here? And he panicked. He said, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Those products, they're for Africa. <laughs> so I said, wow, that's really interesting. Do you think that Africans also want high-quality products? He said, yeah, I'm sure that's true, but I never seem to meet anybody who asks for high-quality products for Africa. They just want one thing, cheap products. Okay, that's interesting. Who are your customers? Are they African? Nope. To this day, I have not yet met an African. They've all been non-African. So I wondered, is this the reason why solar is not taking off in Malawi? Because we're just getting poor quality products. Makes sense. So 
I went back to Malawi with a suitcase filled with high quality solar chargers that you would expect to find in the West. And my first stop was to visit a director of a solar NGO. And he looked at the products and he said, wow, these products, they're amazing. It is light, it just lights up a room. I'm definitely gonna buy these for myself. But look, Joanna, Malawians, they can't do this. These products are too good. This quality, nobody's gonna be able to afford. If you want my organization to buy from you, you're going to need to decrease the price. And the way that you do that is you're gonna to need to decrease the quality. I said, you know, it seems to me that people really are eager and hungry for high quality products. He said, I disagree. Malawians, they don't care about quality, they care about price. The other thing you're gonna to need to do if you wanna work with us is you're gonna to need to get your products certified through the World Bank they have this program called Lighting Africa. By the way, no one will work with you unless you do this. So Lighting Africa is a program that certifies that products will meet certain standards, like they won't break easily, they'll last at least a year, but they don't certify products to meet certain other performance standards. Say, for example, that a light would meet minimum brightness levels, that all of their lights should just light up a room. Now here's the thing about light. A light bulb doesn't just turn itself on. It needs power. And that requires both a solar panel and a battery. So when you have three things, the price goes up and the affordability goes down. So unfortunately, what a lot of manufacturers have done to meet this low price point to make products cheaper is they have decreased the quality, the lights are dimmer, the solar panels and the batteries are, have a lower efficiency or made with lower grade components. Okay, so light is expensive. And it's incredibly important. Light helps a doctor deliver a baby in the night, it helps a student study past dinner time. But light is just one need of many needs for electricity. So a case in point, our beloved William Kamkwamba, who did a TED Talk, he, uh, at the age of 14, brilliant man, was able to look at the drawings in a physics book, and with this, he built a windmill. And this windmill was able to generate enough electricity to power four lights in his home and to irrigate his crops. So neighbors came from all over, and they lined up outside of his home. And do you think that they were lining up to charge their lights? No, they were lining up to charge their cell phones. It has been well documented that cell phones create opportunity and are wealth generators in many sectors, agriculture, business, finance. Some people say the cell phone is a development tool of the 21st century. That's probably up for many people to debate in this room. So where are we at today with solar? We have two indicators, one, most people today still continue to buy poor quality solar products like what you saw in the picture earlier. Point number two, when I arrived in Malawi three years ago, less than 1% of Malawians owned an entry level solar charging system, less than 1%. Do you know what that number has skyrocketed to today? 1%. <laughs> Yet at that same time period, cell phones have gone from 28% all the way up to 40%. Why are people still walking to a barbershop to get a cell phone charge? Can we see cell phones as an opportunity, as a tool, and as a catalyst to introduce solar? Maybe we need to be asking ourselves a new question. The old question is, how do we solarize Africa? Maybe the new question we need to ask is, how do we rapidly solarize Africa? This is a very different question. In order to answer it, we need to reevaluate the products that we offer and pivot in our approach. So a group of passionate Malawians and myself got together and we formed an organization called Team Planet. And we asked, would it be possible for Malawians to create a solar solution that they wanted and they needed? And could this solar solution 
be at a quality you would expect to see in the West, but a price even the poor could afford. We figured if we could create a model that worked in Malawi, it would work anywhere. So we took a year. We took hundreds of products, and we put them with families, and we got feedback. And we took hundreds of more products and got feedback. We did this over and over. And we finally came up with a very simple solution. And what this was is we separated out the battery and the light, and we got a solar panel. And this solar panel will charge devices all day long. It's a money maker. It means that people don't need to go to the barber shop. Now, a person, if they want to charge their neighbors or their friends' phones, they earn money all day. And after two months, they can pay back the initial cost of the first panel, or they can buy a second panel. Now, two months is extremely fast for a payback period. Most solar finance systems have people paying back anywhere from six to 21 months. The pay-as-you-go, I think, is around 18 months. So if this entrepreneur can pay back that, that price within two months, after two months, that panel becomes two, another two months, that two becomes four, until that person has an entire home solar solution. So this concept of selling products piece by piece allows a person to go step by step as they can afford products and they build their solar system to a greater size. And the other benefit of selling them piece by piece is that we're really allowed to increase the quality. So a light can just light up a room. This is a 180 lumen light. But we've also made it magnetic, which fits the lifestyle of many Malawians who live with tin roofs and iron windows so they can mount it anywhere. So when you look at the broader picture of sub-Saharan Africa, 41% of people have cell phones. That means those 41% who own a cell phone have proven, at minimum, that they can afford the cost of a basic phone. That means the solar panel must be the price of a basic phone. And I'm happy to say we're within a couple dollars of hitting that goal. So by getting people with where they are at today, not where we want them to be tomorrow, but where they're at today, means something very important. It means that we decrease the need for microfinance and subsidy. It means that people are doing it themselves. So it so happens that when people have a charged cell phone, they make more calls. And this makes mobile operators very, very happy because they earn more revenue. So there was a recent study where, that found that when South Africans were introduced to uninterrupted electricity, they used their phones 30 to 40% more. What mobile operator wouldn't love to flip a magic switch and have increases of 30 to 40%? It's massive. Perhaps mobile operators will become the naturally incentivized partners that will have a stake in having every single one of their customers solarized. And as a side note, we will be duplicating that research with TNM. Have any of you been walking about and noticed how many people in Malawi have a smartphone? They're everywhere. It's amazing. But it's not surprising. GSMA, which is an umbrella organization for mobile operators, estimates that smartphone ownership is going to triple in the next four years with an incoming 400 million new phones in sub-Saharan Africa. This is a massive opportunity. We have already experienced one tidal wave of unprecedented growth for cell phones. We are now experiencing a second wave, this time for smartphones. Let's jump on this opportunity, all of us, Malawians, entrepreneurs, international community, NGOs, manufacturers, mobile operators. Let's leverage the demand for these smartphones as an entry point to introduce high quality, affordable solar that brings about wonderful things like light and connectivity, and further down the line for larger systems that people can build. There is incredible excitement and momentum behind cell phones. Now let's power them. Thank you.